I'd um, like to introduce you to the family. Yes. Um, and what better place to do it than at uh, Ayers House in the wine cellar, um, which is actually a small part of a massive wine cellar uh, at Ayers House, which we hope to put a few more of these bottles in over, over time. Uh, the Landers wine is quite interesting because you know we're, we're an event centre here. Um, we're licensed for about 1,200 people. And, uh, and we sell um, three or four different wines, we sell by the pallet. We buy by the pallet, we sell you know, a dozen, probably a dozen pallets a year through this business. So we thought, well, let's make our own wine. And uh, I do happen to have a winemaker as a brother-in-law, Matthew Cook, who's actually twice Pushing King winner. Uh, he's, he's pretty well won every award you can win in, in winemaking. So yes. I called on him over a Christmas uh, turkey to uh, make us some wines. So here it is. Uh, one more to come, the GSM, which is still in the barrel um, and uh, yet to be blended, but um, not far off. Uh, and then we'll have the, the family of six. And the reason I call it a family is because the actual name, uh, Londre, um, or Landers Wines, it was anglicised from Londre. And uh, Londre was actually a Frenchman who was uh, working on board one of Napoleon's privateer ships, raiding the British ships in the Channel during the Napoleonic Wars until he was captured and uh, locked up in 1798 in a prison ship in Portsmouth along with a lot of uh, a lot of uh, convicts who were going to be sent to Australia, it's a penal colony. And he had a bit of a gift of the gab and he turned, uh, talked the Poms into believing he was a, 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 a vintner and, um, uh, and they needed somebody to make grog in Australia. So, um, so they basically sent him and his cousin de Riviere um, to Australia on uh, a ship called the Royal Admiral, uh, which is what the Bubbles is named after, and uh, arriving in Sydney in 1800, uh, where they proceeded over three years to plant 12,000 vines uh, in Parramatta, which is not a known wine growing area, and uh, they produced the first ever wine in Australia, which I might add was unpalatable. Um. Um, Ayers House is a Family business, you know, we've owned it for 30 years. Uh, it's a very her it's a heritage building, um, which is called Ayers House after Sir Henry Ayers, who was actually premier when Ayers Rock was discovered. Uh, a lot of the money he made in the Borough Copper Mines he put into exploration in Australia, so he's quite an amazing character. Uh, this particular house is one of the best examples of um, Regency architecture in, uh, in, in Australia. And uh, we've been fortunate to have um, had a, a restaurant and events centre here now for 30 years, 31 years to be precise. And we are still expanding the business. So uh, with a 1,200 um, licensed area, including front lawns, um, you know, we, we can really do any event that we wish to do. Plus we now have a food truck, um, which also makes it a little bit more mobile with our quality food. And right in the middle of the city. Um, there is a little bit of a story on the back of the bottle which um, also refers to the first ever wine write-up which is actually a bit of a tongue-in-cheek uh, letter from Governor King to Lord Grosvenor in London saying that they did make wine but he's not going to bother sending his lordship any samples. <laughs> it also goes on to say that uh, Landers made, um, or Londre, made a very good peach cider um, which kept them suitably juiced up I think in the early days of the settlement in Australia. So it's a great story. Um, we've named the bottles after the story. So we start with Londre um, Cabernet um, uh, Shiraz. Uh, we have the De Riviere, his cousin. Um, he's an interesting chap in, uh, by himself. Um, he actually uh, was kicked out of Australia for being a naughty boy, which doesn't happen very often, but it goes to show the French can be very naughty. Uh, he was actually linked to the Castle Hill um, convict uprising. Because at the time in Australia, we still had, uh, we were at war with France and we were at war with um, Ireland. So the Irish and the French got together and they said, let's kick the British out of Australia. Didn't work. He ended up getting sent home. So it was probably a win-win for him. He left a wife and child in Australia, I might add, to continue the French bloodline. Um, then we have the Royal Admiral um, Bubbles. Um, we, we've named it the uh, uh, Shiraz, which is actually a gold medal Shiraz, uh, 2018. Um, uh, the Crescent, and the Crescent was the name of the land behind uh, Old Government House in Parramatta, um, which was a crescent-shaped piece of land where they planted the 12,000 vines. And then, of course, the uh, Chardonnay, which is actually one of my favourites, these two are my favourites by a long shot, um, Love Engines, which was the ship that um, they raided all the British ships on in, in the English Channel. I think it raided a total of 30, captured 30 ships, so made a lot of money for Napoleon before they were finally captured themselves. So. A little unknown part of Australian history. 
and it just goes to prove that the French have been here a long time. <laughs> We're going to actually name that after a pioneer in northern Queensland who happens to be my wife's five times great-grandfather called Jorgensen, who was the first white child born in far north Queensland. Um, so he became a builder and um, so we're just going to honour the Jorgensen name. Nothing to do with landers, nothing to do with wine. We're just going to have a bit of fun with that no, one. but it's a family mm, name. It so. is, it is. So it sounds a little bit Scandinavian? Scandinavian is, yes. They, they came out here... Um, Probably, I think the 1820s went up north, um, and uh, yes, the first ever white baby born in far north Queensland was a Jorgensen. So, awesome. Yeah, so, and the GSM is my wife's favourite wine. Her father loves it as well, so we was making that in his honour. These wines are the ones that we sell predominantly within his house, and they also are wines that I prefer to drink. Um, then, so therefore we're sort of keeping it close to us. We know we can sell this wine within our own business. Um, however, uh, we want to sort of share it with a lot more people. So we're using a select um, group of retailers, well in fact one retailer at the moment, which happens to be you guys. So, um, so we, we do sell it to friends and, um, and it has been selling quite well. And of course, you know, now we can sell it online as a retail item and hopefully people pick it up and run with it.